Hi and welcome to my channel. It's Rebecca, also known as 4Kids at 147. And I'm going to get up at the first part of my custom multi panel from Ever Moment. So I'm going to use a 42 bottle case. Um, this painting only has 29 colours. However, some of the other paintings, um, so this one has 36 and this one has 33. So what I want to do is I want to do similar to what I've done with the comparison is kit up and sort of kit down at the same time because they're all from the same seller at the same time. Um, the diamonds should all be the same sort of lots. So rather than put a load away um, in my spare storage and then kit up the next lot, even though each painting is going to have plenty of diamonds, um, I do want to make sure that I, I just can do it a little bit less. Um, and it's a little bit of a different way to kit up, kit down. So it makes videos interesting. Um, I'm going to use the inventory sheet for my kitting up, kitting down process. Um, so first up, I want to sort of trim. And I'm just using um, my Fiskars trimmer, which I can't even remember where I purchased this one from. I've had it for years. Um, but they are available in most craft stores or Amazon. I've already checked off if you watched my nice exciting process yesterday um, of the sort of unboxing of these. I have already marked them all off so I do know all the colours that I need are there. Um, but I like to use an inventory sheet when there's one available just because the symbols are the same. Um, I'm going to keep holding that because I will probably cut out the image that they've put on the picture. Um, I do have a bag here in case I do have any that go over. Um, but I'm going to use the sticker maker that was gifted to me by a lovely subscriber. Um, which I use every single time. Um, I, I do one with an imagery sheet. I'm still on the first roll, people. I'm still on the first roll of tape. And I think you guys will have all seen the ones that I've kitted up using this, if you've been with me for a while. So what that does is it basically puts sticker onto the sticker paper onto the back of the paper, um, which means that I can access it. So I'm going to cut these all into little strips and I'm going to get them all on the pots first. And then I'm going to work from there. Now, I'm not quite sure how I want to, I don't know whether to tip out the bags and sort of lay them out because every moment can, they don't always give you bags of diamonds in strips. I'm going to cut fully across that one just to save having bits floating about. Um, so yeah, they don't always give you diamonds in strips. So if you've got say three small bags of them, they're not always connected. And I don't particularly want to be opening and closing pots over multiple times when I don't need to. I would rather kit up all of one number together. So I may have a mess about and lay out the diamonds in a moment but I'm going to get the labels on the pots first off. So I'm just cutting through the actual sticker part, but I'm not cutting through the back of the sticker paper. And that just means that I can peel them off, but they're all together. I definitely do not want them in lots of little bits. Um, some people like to kit up from the top so that they have the lowest number at the top. I quite like it at the bottom when I work on these. It depends what case I work on. If I work on one of the 28 cases, the smaller ones, I tend to do those um, from the top. And I think it's just because they're so small. 
whereas with these bottle ones I like to do it from the bottom. Um, if you do prefer to work by symbol rather than by DMC number, the benefit of these bottle cases is that once you've, you know, you put them all down to start off with in DMC number order because it's easier to find which packet goes in which one because they're in order. And then once you're done, you can always take the pots out and move them about and put them in symbol order. But to be honest, I think, I don't know whether it's because I've been doing diamond paint for so long or whether it's also a mixture of the fact that I used to cross stitch. I still do, actually, just not as much as I diamond paint. Um, that I still cross stitch. But I often even associate a symbol with a DMC number. So this painting doesn't have any black. But when I have a painting that has, you know, a, a predominant couple of colours, so maybe it's a black, maybe it's um, on the comparison painting I'm doing at the minute, it's 820. My brain sort of associates that colour with the symbol while I'm working on it. So while I look at the symbol and I may go, OK, the letter I is black, my brain will still look for 310 when I look in my tubs. So having them in DMC order quite often just works for me. OK, this one's quite long. Let me get rid of that. Um, also, my pop-up bin um, that was kindly gifted to me is currently in another room because I've been working on things for the shop which stay tuned you will find out more on Saturday um yeah because I've been working on that it's currently out there so I think I'm gonna have to get my original little making memories bin out but unfortunately the company is not about anymore I'll have to get that out so that I have a bin for this process. I'm also trying to think how I want to divide up the canvas for this one. It is only a little painting, it's 20 by 20, considering it has 29 colours. Let me get my bin. See, I may look as though I'm sort of organised with all the stuff out, but it's not always the case. Okay, let's move the canvas out the way because that is in a moment. I need to think how say, how I want to sort of divide stuff up um, on the canvas. I'm not sure whether to still do like a, a wheel that tells me how many, um, you know, which, which section to do. Okay, so really, I'm sort of looking for any... I'm not particularly wanting to put these in the right order. I think the likes of C932, they're two separate bags. So maybe I just need to... And they're 161, that's a couple of bags. So maybe I just need to spread them out enough that I can sort of see what's going on. 160 is three bags. And then I might just pick a colour that I want to do and sort of keep half an eye out for any more of them. Let's do that. So let's start with a tray. So this is just one of the basic big trays. I just like this when I'm kitting up. Um, I find it works well. So I'm going to start with the big bags. Um, and then I'm just going to have a quick look according to the colour see this one I have another one but I can't see any more so I'm sort of spreading it out and trying my best to only have to open or only have to mess about with the pot once so I'm going to tip a full one of these in and see where we're at okay so I can clearly get a full one of those in 
um, and I actually have room to also put this one in which is fantastic I'd much prefer especially on a painting that is only 20 by 20 to not have bags left over if I can help it okay 823 that's not that's actually that one any more blues nope looks like we're on one bag for this if I was organized enough um, which sometimes I am sometimes I'm not um, I could sort of have marked the inventory sheet with how many bags I had of each when I checked it off but my thought when I was checking it off was well that's a, it's not a complete diamond anyway um, my thought was just do I have enough it wasn't my thought hadn't got as far as kitting up or kitting down okay so 931 there's another one here, there, 932. Okay. So we'll go by, I think I've got them all. And it may be that I have to reopen a pot, but we'll hope for the best. But it's nice to know I can at least get a big one and potentially a couple of small ones into one pot. I think when I get to the next painting where I'm going to have diamonds left and I'm going to be adding more it may be that I end up with more left over okay there's no more big bags on this side of the table there is a 930 ooh, we've got a 930 with two extra bags so let's see if we can get all of those in the big bags I like to just cut the corner off I find it's a lot easier to get it into the pot but with the small bags I like to cut the whole top off and these are quite empty so you actually get quite a bit of a way down the bag and I do find some of these bags are fuller than others so I do think ever moment work in weight for a lot of it and um, I do always find that I end up with extras so that's good Oh, we have got extras here as well. Um, I do always find we have extras, but I do think that they work with weight because even some of these big bags I've found are bigger than others and some of the small ones are bigger than others. So while I do not fear at all that I will run out of any diamonds, I do think it's going to vary from kit to kit how many diamonds I managed to get in a pot. I think I could open one big one and two small ones in another kit and not get them in a pot. It's just the way it works. Okay, 3799. Doesn't look like I have any extras, which is good because it's a brown. Who wants to do 3799 loads? <laughs> it's a mucky brown. Uh, I do find the symbols are quite small on the inventory sheet for ever moment though. So if they're a bit too small for you, you may prefer to either take a photograph of the inventory sheet or a scan of the inventory sheet and maybe blow it up a bit bigger um, or potentially draw the symbols yourself, but they are quite small. But I find that I learn them as the painting goes along. We'll see if I manage to learn them before I'm done when it comes to a 20 by 20. Okay, so all of those big packets are now in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with sort of the darker ones because I think I find that a bit easier when I'm scanning to see if I've got any more packets of it. Process of elimination. It's like sometimes when you get a big confetti section of a painting, you go for the colour that stands out the most in the hope that you don't miss any. At least that's what I do sometimes. It's like, okay, that symbol is staring at me. I need to do that one first and hope I don't miss any of the symbol. It's not always the way. Sometimes I do still have to go find the missing one, but a little bit of static in that. Okay, let's go for 699. I remember there only being one packet of these. I don't think it uses many diamonds. 
what does it say? 699, how many do I need? Two. This painting needs two of these diamonds, so I think I'll have some left over. Okay, let's go for this one. 336. Don't see any, oh, I do. There's another one. So we've got four separate bags for this. Because they're already separated, I'm just gonna cut them separate and fight with them. Because it does look like we have static going on in these as well. So we could have a bit of fun. Jumping diamonds today. You didn't think you'd get that when you started watching. To see if any get to jump anywhere. They're not behaving too badly at the moment. Sorry if you can hear noise above me. It sounds like um, my youngest is either trying to find something in her bedroom or is having a clean up. I tend to try and get um, the conservatory, you know, area of the house dusted through the week. Like I'll, I'll either do some or all of it straighten up you know on my breaks and lunches at work because I'm at home I'm working from home so quite often I'll get those done and get the get that part of the house done through the week so I can sorry my camera seems to be saving like like 15 minutes at the moment I might need to check I didn't mess with the setting um yeah sorry I like to sort of try and clean up the, the conservatory area and, and the general kitchen and stuff while working, um, either on breaks or lunches or, you know, when I go and make a brew, for example, I'll give the kitchen side a wipe down. I like to do it when I'm on calls as well. So if I'm on work calls, um, that's when I like to sort of clean up a bit while I'm on the call because then it just saves me either getting distracted by an email coming in or, you know, my brain switching off to what's being said. I like to just pick up my cloth and duster and, and uh, multitask. And it, it makes the whole dusting, tidying experience a lot, a lot less horrid. Um, but the, the kids still tend to do their rooms at the weekend. I mean, my youngest is currently doing college from home. Um, so she you know, needs to pay a lot more attention, of course, to her lessons. She's writing notes and whatever else. And then she tries to get her homework done during the week in between lessons so that she's not spending all weekend doing homework. Um, and then tends to have a good a good sort out of her bedroom at the weekend. And I film. And it works as long as we don't have too much sorting out under our bed. Too much banging. We make it work. Okay, I'm going to go in sort of... Am I going to go in number order? I don't know because then I'm going to get to the point where I can't tell if I've done it or not. We'll see. I might just go for a colour that I spot now. It's a little bit easier to sort of see all the numbers and check that there's no other bags of it missing. So let's just start getting rid of some of these. 451, quick scan to check I've not got any other bags. But it is a small painting. There's a lot of these that I only have one bag for. So it makes it a lot easier for kitting up. A lot quicker which is always good 169 I've only got two and I am finding that some of these bags I can actually squash the diamonds down and I've got plenty of space to cut it with my scissors but then I did have one before that I had hardly any room to cut it with my scissors which is what makes me think they do it by weight 3841 I'm going to fit them all in my storage though, which is good. I'm not going to need to have any extra in bags. Say, so I think that will come on the second or the third one. Got a lot of static on those. Um, you can always pop a little bit of a 
a tumble dryer sheet in your pots if you do find static it is a big issue I tend to find it can be the biggest issue when you're kitting up on occasion it can be you know quite a bit of a pain if they are being extremely jumpy but I don't find it's as bad when I'm actually working on the painting um, I don't know why but it's not it's not near as bad quite often I think because I'm only tipping out a few so the ones that are static just stay stuck to the side of the pot they can stay there okay three eight six zero go for that three oh two four Not many left now at all. I need to think how I want to do my canvas. Hmm. I've got a feeling it's gonna be very confetti, this painting, so I might do it in smaller sections. Because even though I'm going to finish my comparison canvas, I think before I start this one, and that's when I'm sort of gonna do it while I'm waiting to get up my next comparison. It may be that if I actually broke this one up into little sections, I could maybe do a section on an evening if I, you know, only have maybe 20 minutes to do some time and painting. Because my other one is in very big sections. I'm not sure. Okay, 932. It's got some gorgeous colours in this though. I'm really looking forward to how this turns out. I can imagine it being a lot of confetti with it having buildings and stuff in it. I'll have a good look at the canvas in a minute because I do want to trim the excess glue off it as well. And I think it'll be a lot easier to do before I start working on the painting. Ever moment is so much nicer to cut these baggies off. I am surprised they've not gone to just putting them in grip seal bags yet though. Especially if they do do a lot of this by weight and you know get the diamonds ready according to the canvas they're selling. But maybe that's not the way that they work. Maybe it's not actually by weight. And it's just one of their machines puts a few more in the bag than the other one does. Who knows? Okay, this one is definitely jumping diamonds because they've not even hit the tray. But they're in the pot, they're all the way around the pot. Um, but if I only need a few, I'm likely to just pop my pop my pen into the pot to get one out anyway. Oh, that was me. That wasn't static. That was, that was me tipping them in far too quickly. And they just shot out. There is a little bit of static with them, but that definitely wasn't static that made them all go in the tray before. Let's get those in. Well, this is going to be a quick getting up. Oh, and then we've got 161, which actually had a big bag hiding underneath it. Because I forgot I'd put the others on the top. But we know they're all going to fit in. So, say, I don't need that bag, which is great. I don't need any extra baggies putting any in. They all fit in the tray, which is to be expected. As I say, the canvas is only a 20 by 20. So let's have a look at the canvas. Say, so I do know that I want to trim off the double-sided tape. So if you can see um, the overhang, can you see here, there's quite a bit where 
so the paper stops where the tape stops. There's quite a bit of overhang here. This side here is minimal, it's tiny, uh, but this side is quite a bit as well. And before, I'm actually gonna be prepared, before I touch cutting up this top cover, I am gonna get rid of that overhang. And of course, I've got the ruler with the cork on the back. That's not the best one to get. Let's get this one with the foam on the back. It's not as old as my other one. I'm doing it upside down, but that's only because I don't want this foam stuff on the bottom of the ruler to stick to the tape. But I'm actually more than happy for the ruler itself to stick to the tape because I'm not putting it on the tape that the diamonds are on. And then, oh, I've actually got my ceramic cutter as well. I'm going to do it with this one and then I'm going to get my ceramic cutter. So I am lightly going around the edge. Don't go too heavy with it because you do not want to cut through your canvas to your table. All it needs to be is just a light bit to go over the tape. And then what you can actually do is pull down the tape a bit so you can get hold of it and you can actually peel it off if it will come off. This one's being a bit of a pain. Get rid of that bit. It's coming off, it's just not coming off in a strip. No, it's coming off in pieces. Okay, we'll play it that way then. It's a good job you're a small painting. If this was a big painting, it would take a lot more. Okay, this tape is really, really thin. So quite often the double-sided tape is thin anyway. It's like a tissue tape. But on other paintings, I have found that you can just sort of pull it up and pull it up in a full strip. This one is breaking before I get to that point. So I'm just gonna have to keep going with this one and take it off this way instead. It's rolling up on itself. And I'm trying to keep it to this side so that it doesn't get stuck to any of the painting because I want the tape to stay there. Um, if you're a bit unsure, of course use washi tape. Um, or sometimes what I do is I wait until I've placed the diamonds all the way around here and then I cut it then and I actually use the diamonds as a straight edge. Um, but that's that side cut off. Let's do this side. So let me line this up and then let me see if my ceramic paper cutter do it without causing me a problem. Okay, so I recently got this ceramic paper cutter um, and it has got a very, very tiny, I'm not even sure if you can see that, very, very tiny blade. Um, it's not as easy to hold as the knife. I'm going extreme, oh, see, it's going over, okay. I can't direct that as much as I can direct this. So on the interest of being safe and not sorry, I'm gonna use that. I do think that could be good though for the top cover paper. When I don't have to be as fussy and as precise, I'll use that cutter. Whereas this is definitely not coming off the easy way. There's something satisfying about when you're able to just pull it up and it just peel. That one needed rolling. Okay, so that's the other side done. In regards to the bottom and the top, it's very, very thin. I might get away with taking the bottom off actually. The top, I think, is even thinner. Just stay down. Okay. 
because I always err on the side of caution and keep, you know, as close to the black line as possible. But if anything, it's a little bit under. Let's see how that one works. Let's see if I can get that to come up. Oh, it's coming off. I'm just not even going to try pulling it because I know it's not going to let me. When I pull it, it just snaps. And I haven't got many nails left either at the moment. Can't remember the last. Oh, that did it. See, that's what I wanted it to do. So you could just peel it and pull it all off. Couldn't do it on the other bits. Okay. This side is, say, very, very minimal where it's overhanging. In fact, you can hardly see it at all. If it starts picking up bits, I'll just use some of the Ever Moment tape to go around the edge. But is this confetti wise? Yes. As you can imagine, there are 29 colours that have to fit in this very, very small space. So it is very confetti-ish. So I think I am going to cut it into sections. I'm trying to think how many sections. So if I cut that in half and then cut it in half again, that's going to give me quite a few, isn't it? It's going to give me 16. Or paper's not quite halfway for me to do that though I could cut it there so if I see how it works with this ceramic cutter let's try and be brave if I cut it by that S so that would give me one two three four five strips but then maybe I only cut it across the middle, so I end up with 10 sections. Let's see how this works. I don't know if it's actually cutting through. No, it's not. Maybe it's because I'm using a ruler. Is that cutting? I don't want to do it too much and it cut all the way through. No, it's not actually cutting. Okay, I'm going to have to mess with that at some point when I can actually figure out what it is that I'm doing with it. I'm going to stick with what I know for now, which is this pen. So I'm going to cut that one. Memory card saved. So I'm going to cut them sort of using this pattern by the S. Because this is actually in a straight line. It's this part that's not and it moves up. So I'm going to just do a little bit of a different shape, I think. Put that there. And then cut that there. So. That's now cut into strips. Now they're quite small strips. And as I say, it does depend on how you like to work as to how small. But then what I think I'm going to do is I think I'm just going to go for down the middle. And I'm just doing that by sight. So this is going to be one section. Now for me, that's a nice size section. I like that. That's still classed as small for me. I would normally go twice the size. Um, but of course you go for what works for you. Um, in regards to sections. Is that one not actually cut at all? It's cut there. Okay, that one's not cut fully. So let's go back. At least I know this one is down by the S's. Let's try that again. It's always safer to be going over it a little bit harsher than it is to have cut it too much. Okay, and you can always bend your canvas if you wanna be able to see if your line has cut through and it should start popping back up. 
Okay, am I going to do this in random? I think I am because I'm really enjoying doing them in random at the moment. So let me get some of my new little stickers. So these are some new small stickers that I've got. But there will be more information coming for, of course, um, more information coming for at the weekend. Um, but basically, they are tiny stickers with tiny diamonds on. And they're cute. Um, so I'm going to actually number these. So I'm going to number them 1 to 10. I want to see how these stick compared to the other ones that I've been using that can peel off. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Because that's how many sections that I've got on this painting, and I'm going to put them on in order. So we've got section one, two. This is where you might need to fold your canvas to sort of see where you've cut up to. Doesn't matter if you know if they're, they're a little bit sized differently. I don't find that that matters because sometimes it's quite nice to have a section that is a little bit of a different size or different shape. These are quite long and skinny. I normally work in something that's more of a square shape, a box square shape, and these aren't. These are, let's say, little, little oblong shapes. And then... Let me get my phone um, and I'll show you how I set the app up for this. Okay, so um, I have an app here called Tiny Decisions. Um, and that is where I have my current wheel. So can I add a new wheel? No, not that one. You tell I haven't used this much. Oh, here we go. Add. So I want to create a new one. So it, it normally is for questions, or well, for this, I'm not using it for questions. Um, so I'm just going to put EM part one. Now you could just name them 10 sections, 20 sections, 16 sections, so that you can reuse them. Um, but then the first option is going to be for option one. Second is going to be option two. And it's quite simple for this one is it's numbers. So I'm just adding and then I'll add four and then add new option and I'll put in five, six, seven, eight. Sorry if you can't see this properly, but if I don't lean it down this way, I can't see it either. Um, add 10. Ooh. So it's now going to Make me watch an advert. Okay, so I do want to check the settings of it. So when I go into it, EM part one, what I do want to turn on is non-repeating selection. And basically what that means is that when you select, you know, when you select it, um, and then do that section and spin your wheel again, it will not pick the same um, number. So basically what it does is it blacks them out. So if I show you on my other one, my other wheel, which is my couple, which is 30 by 40, it has blacked out all the sections that I've done um, apart from one or two, but that's only because I started doing it halfway. <laughs> so when it picks that when this wheel picks that number that I'd already done before I started using it it will then black out uh, but basically it does this so the blacked out is every section that I've already done and then I can go up here and actually choose my EM part one wheel that only has 10 so I might rename these wheels when I'm done when I'm finished I might just rename it as a 10 part and then I can use it for another painting because when you're done, you can reset the wheel. So if I choose this now and it chose option two, I would do option two. When I went back to it, I'd hit the wheel again. And you see number two is blacked out. 
and it's chosen number four. Now, of course, once you've finished your painting and you've done all your wheels and all your selections, you can then choose to reset the wheel and it basically puts them all back as blank. So you can start again. So it saves you typing the numbers in constantly. In effect, you can just have a wheel for each size painting that you do. I hope that helps. I may have been a bit of waffle, but um, I've now got a little 20 by 20 with 10 sections. I've got my diamonds. Um, I will, as I say, I will probably be keeping this, but this is the one that I'm doing. I reckon there's going to be quite a bit of confetti, um, but I am excited to see how this whole painting turns out when it's finished. Um, I hope this kitten up has been entertaining for you even though it was quite quick um, I thank you so much for staying with me and watching and I will speak to you all again soon